Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A federal judge has ruled the Trump administration must continue DACA. That's the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program that gives hundreds of thousands of young undocumented people permission to live and work in the United States. Trump tried to cancel DACA last year, but Judge John Bates in Washington, D.C., ruled Tuesday Trump's efforts to cancel the program were based on virtually unexplained claims. The judge said if the administration cannot better explain its reasoning, it must continue to accept both new and and renewed DACA applications. The Trump administration has 90 days to respond. It's the third time Trump's effort to cancel DACA has been blocked by a court. This comes as the Supreme Court is hearing arguments today about the Trump administration's third travel ban, which blocks most people from Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria and Yemen from entering the United States. The Supreme Court's expected to rule on whether the travel ban is constitutional by the end of June. Senate lawmakers have indefinitely postponed Dr. Ronnie Jackson's confirmation hearing as Secretary of Veterans Affairs, even as President Trump is continuing to defend Jackson, his personal White House physician. On Tuesday, Montana Senator John Tester said Jackson is known within the White House as Candyman because he handed out prescription pills as if they were candy. Reports have also surfaced of Dr. Jackson drinking on the job and once drunkenly banging on the hotel room door of a female employee during an overseas work trip in 2015 until the Secret Service intervened. The interim director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Mick Mulvaney, told a group of over 1,000 bankers and lobbyists that they should give him more money in campaign contributions if they want to weaken the power of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is tasked with regulating the financial industry and major Wall Street banks. During Mulvaney's speech to the American Bankers Association conference, he also said, as a congressman, he would meet only with lobbyists who'd given him money. Among those who donated to his campaign were payday lenders who gave him over $60,000. Payday lenders are one of the key industries the Consumer Financial Protection Board, or CFPB, has sought to regulate. The United Nations is warning of an impending humanitarian catastrophe in the Syrian province of Idlib, one of the last rebel-held territories in Syria, which is also home to at least a million Syrian civilians who've been displaced from other parts of the country. This is U.N. High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi. The fact remains that it's very difficult to get out of the country, so people get internally displaced. So they are refugees in their own country. And even those options are becoming less and less. We've seen it towards in, in the most dramatic phase of the Ghouta offensive. Uh, so the, the, the country is becoming a trap, is becoming in some places a death trap for civilians. In Iraq, women accused of having ties to ISIS are facing widespread human rights violations inside Iraqi refugee camps, including being denied food and health care, facing sexual exploitation, and being refused identification cards that would allow them to travel, work and enroll their children in school. That's according to a new report by Amnesty International, which accuses local Iraqi authorities and armed actors inside refugee camps of discriminating against women who are believed to have a family member who collaborated with ISIS while the group held swaths of territory across Iraq, including the city of Mosul. The report, called The Condemned, calls on Iraqi authorities to end collective punishment of women with perceived ties to ISIS. Israel says it's scrapping its plans to forcibly deport or imprison tens of thousands of African asylum seekers and immigrants living in Israel. The plan had sparked widespread international condemnation and protests inside Israel. This is Helafam, an immigrant from Eritrea. A difficult time that for the asylum seekers here in Israel on the matter of being deported or being imprisoned for a lifetime. And it's good uh, news to hear that the first deportation is cancelled. And also it's a time that there should be a humanitarian solution for the asylum seekers. In Mexico, hundreds of students took to the streets of Guadalajara to protest the kidnapping and murder of three university students who went missing five weeks ago while they were filming a school project. 
Eve, I am here from the Quek School, the cinema school from the UNAM. We are here to represent and to give the voice to all the women, men and child that are being disappeared in Mexico because we are living a necropolitic that is doing a very big harm to this country. Mexican authorities are claiming the students were kidnapped by a cartel and tortured before their bodies were dissolved in acid. Authorities have not yet presented sufficient evidence to support this claim. The details of previous Mexican government accounts about student disappearances, including the 43 students who are missing from the Ayotzinapa Teachers College two years ago, have been subsequently disproven. In South Africa, multiple unions have called for a nationwide strike today to protest unemployment, economic inequality, and a proposed minimum wage of a mere 20 rand, or $1.60 an hour. Today's mobilization comes as bus drivers in South Africa are already on strike. In New York City, agents with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, known as ICE, have arrested at least 225 people in a sweeping week-long raid across New York City's five boroughs and the surrounding areas. Dozens of those arrested by ICE agents had no criminal record. The raid comes despite the fact that New York City is a sanctuary city. In Spokane, Washington, a federal judge has blocked the Trump administration from defunding Planned Parenthood programs to help prevent teen pregnancy across the western United States. In Judge Thomas Rice's ruling, he wrote, quote, the court finds that HHS, that's the Health and Human Services Department, arbitrarily and capriciously terminated the program the public interest weighs in favor of Planned Parenthood, the judge said. In Arizona, former Republican state Senator Debbie Lesko has won a special congressional election to fill the seat of far-right-wing Congressmember Trent Franks, who resigned last year after multiple female staff members say he asked them if he would give birth to his children because he and his wife were having trouble conceiving. Lesko won only a narrow victory over her Democratic challenger, physician Harold Tipperneni, in a district that Trump carried by over 20 points. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence's his brother, Greg Pence, is running for U.S. Congress in Indiana. Graduate students at Columbia University have launched a week-long strike to demand the right to unionize. Striking students say Columbia University has refused to bargain with the students who voted more than a year and a half ago to unionize under the UAW, the United Auto Workers. The strike comes at the end of the spring semester, when the labor of graduate student teaching assistants and researchers is most essential to the functioning of the university. It also comes only one day after the 50-year anniversary of the launch of the historic nearly week-long occupation of five buildings, including the president's office and Lowe Library, which inspired student protests across the country. To see our full coverage of the historic 1968 Columbia student strike, go to our website, democracynow.org. And in Pennsylvania, the popular rapper Meek Mill has been freed from prison after the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ordered him immediately released on bail. Mill was sentenced and jailed last November over a minor parole violation, but the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, led by Larry Krasner, has questioned whether his underlying 2008 conviction would withstand an appeal, given that he was convicted in part based on a false testimony by the arresting police officer. Meek Mill's jailing has sparked widespread calls for his freedom, including from Jay-Z, Colin Kaepernick and activists across Philadelphia. On Tuesday, after after being released from prison, Meek Mill was flown by helicopter by the owner of the Philadelphia 76ers basketball team to the basketball stadium, where Meek Mill rang the bell before the playoff game Tuesday evening began. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.